I'm back again. This time I'm talking about Green Rabbit. Green Rabbit's been around for quite a while now. Now you might remember one of the first NFG videos that we ever put out was a pack opening of about $20,000 of Green Rabbit stuff. Um, luckily we pulled a lot of good stuff from that and we've been invested ever since. Now since it's been around quite a while, the more time that it spends out there, the more developed and the more intricate the game's becoming. It's getting more and more features it's releasing more and more things and most recently the 3d game and races now it is still in development mode but it is quite fun to play for the rest of this video though i'm going to be touching on the basics things like staking things like foragers missions armor crafting greensmith crafting all of the juicy things that's come out first all before this amazing 3d game's coming out so let's get started let's jump in and let's see what the lowdown is If you do want to know a little bit more, and this has enticed you a little bit to look deeper into Green Rabbit, either for the first time or again, I would highly suggest checking out their website as it's completely revamped. They have a very in-depth lore section, if that's your thing, where you can read chapters and chapters of information, maybe find out some secrets about the game. There's also a fact section. Now this fact section is absolutely great. It'll go more in depth on the things that I've just touched on. It'll also tell you much more about the other features in the game. So I highly suggest heading over there and learning more before we put out these extra videos so that you can get into the game. And when these videos come out, you can start telling us info that maybe we don't know. When looking at the market, there is a lot of things you can buy for Green Rabbit. But the main things you need to get started are the USB drives for staking, the stakeable NFTs to go on those USB drives, and foragers to get yourself started on those forager missions. For the flash drives, there's five USB slots that you can fill up. When it comes to the stakeable NFTs, you can have anything from 3D characters to dioramas to lore tablets. So go through and pick what's within your budget so that you can fill up as much as possible and get as many of those drives and slots full so you can start generating your selenium. So staking, it's a very simple and easy system to use, but to get the most potential out of it, there's going to be a little bit of math involved. To get started, what you're going to want to do is to go on over to their website, hit play, log in with the wallet that you want to use and with all the NFTs on it, and you'll see this dashboard. Now, once you're on the dashboard, you wanna go and go to the left, go into staking, and once you're in staking, you'll see that you have USB flash drive slots. You're gonna to wanna to click on one of those slots, and you'll see that you have your choice of USBs that you've bought before. With the USBs, you wanna pick the ones with the most space that you can fill up with the most stuff, like we talked about, uh, fit them into the slots, and once you've got them all staked, you can start picking NFTs to go in there. So once you've got them staked, you're gonna wanna go in there and you'll be able to see all NFTs that you can put on those flash drives. With those NFTs, you'll see that each one gives you a shillinium per hour and they also take up a certain amount of space. So this is where the math comes in. You're gonna wanna work out which ones you can fit in to maximize that number of space and get the absolute most shillinium per hour that you can. When Green Rabbit first came out, its main feature was staking. Now, they had a very unique way of doing this compared to other projects. Typically, when you went into a project and you had to stake something, what you would do is take all those NFTs, go onto their site and stake them to that wallet, meaning that they no longer were in your own personal wallet, meaning you couldn't sell them or you couldn't do anything to them unless you unstaked them from that site. Now, with Green Rabbit though, what they did was is they introduced a system where you had flash drives and you staked your NFTs to those flash drives, meaning the only thing staked to the actual site itself were the flash drives. Everything else was still in your actual wallet. You had full control over everything the whole time. So in some ways, it was a much better process. Now, some people because they weren't used to it were a little confused because these nfts were obviously still in their wallet they could have had them staked to game and they couldn't differentiate or remember if they had multiple of the same nfts what ones they were actually using 
but once you got over that hurdle and you started looking at what NFT IDs were actually being used, it's actually a much, much better system because like I said, you had full control over all of those NFTs that you were actually staking. So if you decided that you wanted to sell one of those and maybe upgrade to a better NFT, you could do that without having to go into the site, unstake all those NFTs, bring them back to your wallet, sell them. You could just go straight to your wallet, sell them straight on Atomic Hub or NFT Hive or however you plan to do it and you wouldn't have to worry about the whole process of using CPU to jump in, unstake, restake, move things around, list sales, things like that. So it was a very unique system for the time and it worked out great. So foragers bring you back the other tokens in the game. So these are things that you can use for armor smith crafting and things like that, or they can also be sold on Alcor just like Shalinium. So depending on your budget, head on over to the market and you can get yourself either one or two foragers because there's currently two foraging mission slots available. Once you have your foragers, you can head back to the dashboard, select a foraging section and you'll see those slots come up. With those slots, you'll see also the forager selected next to it. You can go through the for foragers that you own and pick what forager you want to use. Then once you click the plus, you'll be able to select the mission to send it on. Once you've selected that mission to send it on, you'll see that there's a timer counting down until the mission returns. Once the mission returns, you can collect and if you're successful, claim what is brought back to you. If you're unsuccessful, usually your person will be injured. You can wait for that person to recover or you can use some of that selenium that you got from staking to recover it faster and send it straight back out. The things that it brings back are experience and also those other tokens that we talked about. With the experience, after a certain amount of gain, you can level up your character so that it can do more things and potentially bring you back more stuff. The Shalinium that you're generating is the basic token that everyone started with. So it's the thing that you're gonna to use to buy most of the stuff in the game. Um, it's the main currency. There is other currencies, like the things your foragers bring back from the forager missions that we'll look at in a second, but those are mainly used in armor crafting. So with Shalinium, it's the main currency that everyone started with, and it's stuff that you're gonna wanna start grinding out with that staking before you even get into everything else. One of the things that the fact touches on is CPU issues. If you are having CPU issues and you don't have the wax currently to stay to get more actions, then lucky for you, we have some friends that might be able to help you out. If you head on over to the Rocket CPU website, you can pay a 10% fee of the wax that you want to be able to stake to your account. So for instance, if that was a 100 wax stake, you would pay one wax for that. You rent that for a period of time, allowing you to do more actions and to alleviate some of that CPU strain for a while. So I highly recommend you head on over and check them out because they've definitely helped me when it's came to sometimes when the CPU strain is extremely high. There is a lot more to Green Rabbit, and as you can see in some of the footage behind me, there is a lot more gameplay involved to it. This is barely scratching the surface and just the very basics needed to get started. We are gonna be making a whole bunch of new content coming out with more instructional videos on how to do more things within Green Rabbit as it does get far more technical as the gameplay goes on. So that's the absolute basics to get started with Green Rabbit. Like I said, we will be posting more videos in the very near future to cover all aspects of the game, to go more in depth into the things that are currently available and all the new things to come. So don't forget to check them out. If you did like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to catch those new videos. Head on over to the Discord and say hey where we can fill you in on any of the questions that you have. Also, you could head on over to the Green Rabbit Discord where they're more than happy to help. Anytime I've had any issues, I've had everything resolved within the hour and I'm back on track with my earnings again. Don't forget to check out Rocket CPU if you are having those CPU issues and I'll see you next time because that's been the lowdown on Green Rabbit.